You notice that? I stopped moving and still could hear footsteps. Ah, there you are. Hello, my friend. Come on, hit me. Hit me. Come on. Come on. There we go. Hey folks, welcome to No One Survived. Alright, so we're going to be just putting together a bit of a newbie guide, basic tutorial on what to do in this game, how to actually do it. Um, for that, I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. Um, we just want to really focus on the actual guide, so we're going to have the waves turned off. Uh, you know, because everyone knows you get hit by a wave every seven days, it's going to wreck you, unless you're really prepared. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and leave. I will set that to very abundant. Yeah, we'll leave things, you know, pretty simple because it's not about the challenge. It's about simply understanding how to actually do something. All right, so first up, we have merchants. Uh, if you look at the map, you're going to see these little icons like this, this little person icon that says a merchant. Um, each merchant has its own specialties and what they sell and what they can actually teach you. Yes, you learn skills from them. Uh, you just go up to them, pity, and you can barter with them to sell, uh, buy and sell things. So this merchant, you know, they specialize in agriculture, which is going to be your animals and seeds. Um, also, if you go ahead and s click on the I have some things for you, the second option, you can give them items and they will give you relationship. This is very important because when you want them to teach you something, you know, one of their skills, this one can teach metallurgy and mechanics, it costs relationship to learn it. It's a hundred relationship to f basically max out a skill. Each skill has five points. Once you max it out, you know, it's never going to go down. Um, you need the different skills in order to learn the different technologies. I'm not going to go through the whole technology tree in detail. But important things to remember is you need to come over here to get your rainwater collector, which requires engineering level one. And you get engineering by basically building your buildings. All right, so a lot of you have played a lot of uh, survival games and you're like, okay, I already know how to build. What, what, what are you gonna go over that I really need to know? The uh, main thing in this game is you can. Uh, you have to know that you can't build too close to them, unfortunately. Let's see. Can we do this relatively close? No, building permission. Wow. There we go. Alright. So we'll go ahead and start our building. We've got our base platforms. Now we want to put up our walls. Hey, wait, why is my wall not sitting there? Uh, that's because in this game you got to do something a little bit different. you got to go into beams and columns. You need beams in order to actually provide your walls with support. And it gets better. You have to put it on every corner where you're going to have something touching. Okay, great, you know, so I get a, get my beams here, and then I can start putting up my walls, right? Sure, yeah, you know, I can put up my walls. So we'll go ahead and do a, we'll do a door frame there. 
regular wall there. Do a window here. We'll do a wall there. I'll do a wall there. Right. I'll go ahead and throw some windows here. All right, great. Now we can ask, also add in a wooden door mm -hmm. and our windows. All right, why do you want to add in the doors and windows? Because uh, they actually add a little bit of strength to your walls. The zombies will break them before they break the wall itself. All right, so if you notice, there's a couple different stairs. These corner stairs do not lock. They don't lock to anything. So when you put them in, they'll just kind of float there. So it's best if you get everything else in place. Now these stairs, you know, they say, you know, it looks, looks like it should be an indoor stair. Um, it can work indoors, but if you try to do it outside, this is what's going to happen. It just locks to a specific place and you can rotate it around but it still doesn't really actually go where you want it however if you hold down control you can do the offset a little bit to maneuver it but for outside you'll want to actually do this one okay great you know we got our base building figured out right we need a roof 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 oh look we got lots of roof options here um you know we got thatch we got stone um, eventually there's going to be more options but say you want a second floor okay great we'll go over here get the wooden floor and it won't attach because again you've got to have the wood beams so let's go ahead and add one here and here all right why are we adding them there because if you didn't add it on both sides, you wouldn't actually be able to put the building together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, chop down some trees and get this started, and then we will continue on and show you what's next with it. All right, great, so we've got the beginnings of our base. Uh, you notice these walls are still not built. That's because they require planks. And you can't get planks right off. Instead, you have to actually start building your workshop. Wait, I don't have anything in my workshop. Well, that's because I need the skill. You do not start with the beginning skill. For that, you just need a log and a couple stones. Um, got the logs in my inventory, so I just need to find a few stones on the ground. And one more. Alright, so we'll go ahead and we'll get the crafting table. Alrighty, so crafting table needs three logs, five stones, and one toolbox. Well, hey, you know, you can craft the toolbox, right? Yeah, but you need mechanics level two and iron ingot, and you have to craft it at the crafting table. So, in order to get your first toolbox, you're going to actually need to go and find some places to loot in the world. It just happened to spawn me down here. And I know that there's going to be some toolboxes down in this little building set here. Uh, it's going to be some barns and other stuff, and there are a few zombies. So we'll go ahead, head down there, and do a little bit of looting. And I'll show you what that's like, as well as a little bit of basic combat. Alright, so I actually slept through the first night just to get us uh, back to daylight so y'all could easily see. Um... You know, here's the first vehicle. We're just going to go ahead and loot it. There might be a toolbox in here, but... Well, got some ammo. 
And some gun oil. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and take it. And there's some... Usually gonna be some fuel and engine parts, as well as nuggets. Um, I'm gonna leave the car parts, because we don't need those right now. You can find some vehicles in this game that you can actually repair with a car repair kit and keep them fueled to be able to drive around. There was a zombie over there, but we'll see if we can find another one. So, overall, their detection radius isn't that huge. Unlike in uh, Seven Days to Die, for instance. Because of the game settings, you know, it's pretty easy for me to take them out. Um, they'll usually drop fabric, and sometimes you can get your arrows back, but don't count on it, so be prepared to craft a bunch of arrows. Alright, so, let's see. In buildings like this, you aren't likely going to find uh, anything, um, just because the developer is single guy and he hasn't really been he's it takes a while to add things to, into the game it's so like that building that looks like that you know you're gonna see it all over the place it's gonna be empty this truck you can't loot anything from this building is full of boxes for you to loot but be careful because buildings like this you're usually gonna find a zombie in Also, an important note, there is a zombie called a crawler. If you see it, unless you've got something like an AR, uh, stay away from it. Alright, so simple parts. You're going to need a lot of those. So anytime you see them, grab them. Uh, we can leave the rest of the stuff because we aren't going to need it for this. The object isn't for us to go in-depth, it's just to cover the basics. Oh, here we go, toolbox. Get some iron, some more nuggets. Um, I also hope to find some actual ore. Okay, so there's another toolbox. See, here's more toolboxes. So they're actually pretty easy to find. Even if you lower your um, your settings of you know your loot spawns, you're gonna find a lot of things that you really need. I was hoping to find. So in this game, there is gonna be two different methods. Oh, there's oh here we go, some clay and some silver ore. Um, in this game, there are solar panels. So yes, you can set up a full solar system to actually provide power to your base. And there are locks somewhere. I haven't encountered them yet. But, um, you know, you can pick up and craft lock tools to unlock locks. That's a lucky find. Uh, good for one of our other videos, uh, or another part of this video. So we've got Engineering Volume 1, Metallurgy 1, yeah I'm really just looking for a solar panel just to show it, but I may not find one. So we'll go ahead and search those and then we'll head out. And 
kill that zombie that I heard. Those are something, some other things I want to show you right around here. Ah, blueprints, water storage, sewing machine, solar panel. So these are a bit more late game. You pick them up and you use them to craft with. Uh, have not actually done that yet, and it's not really pertinent to you know getting the game and figuring it out. So we will leave that to cover in another video. Hello, I heard you. Where are you? I know there's more than the one zombie in this area. So you gotta, if you're used to playing seven days, um, you can hear footsteps around you, you know, to watch out for that. Well, pretty much really most any game. You notice that? I stopped moving and still could hear footsteps. Ah, there you are. Hello, my friend. Come on, hit me. Hit me. Come on. Come on. There we go. Hitboxes are a little weird. Oh, come on, hit me a bit more. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is now I am filthy. I am covered in blood, both the zombies and mine. My health will regenerate over time, especially if I keep my thirst, protein, and carbs up, as well as my mood and fatigue. Hygiene is highly important, as are antibodies. If you lose, as it says, if, you reach, if your antibodies reach zero, you will die. You lose antibodies by being in combat and fighting with the zombies. So let me go ahead and drink up. And I'm not going to worry about using the medical kit because my health isn't that bad and I'm not going to be doing much. I'm going to eat some food just to get my carbs and protein up. And let's go ahead and take care of the hygiene. So you notice I can drink, but you also see another option, clean up. Let's go ahead and clean up a little bit. It used, so our water bottles that we get give us two uses. If we drink it, it replenishes 30 thirst. If we use it to clean up, it replenishes five hygiene. So let's not do that. Um, if you're going to clean up, what you need to do is find an actual water source. You notice earlier that it started to rain. You cannot clean up in the rain. You cannot wash yourself. You can't do anything. Um, you can't even, you know, gather water from the ground or anything like that. Instead, you have to go to basically the water along anywhere around the edge of the maps, or in some towns you'll find a water well that you can use. Note, do not drink from any of these water sources. It will get you sick. It's uh, guaranteed. Instead, you'll need to actually take your water and purify it. So. Let's go ahead, we will fill up both of our containers. 
And we are going to clean up. There we go. We are now back to 100% on hygiene. And if you mouse over the bottle water, the water bottles, it says dirty water. So you don't want to drink that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead, head back to the base, and finish setting it some things up and show you a bit more. Alright, now we're back at the base. Let's go ahead and finish our crafting table. Great, so now we can use it and hey, there's no plank recipe. Why not? Well, because we still got to learn that. So to learn the plank recipe, we just need a log. But you notice our inventory is a little full. So for now, I'm going to dump skill books. And yep, we've still got more of this stuff. Um, so we will go ahead and get ourselves a few logs in order to put together the walls. Uh, also, another note, be careful when you're chopping down trees. They have a tendency to jump up and bite you. And if you think the zombies might hit hard, no. A tree can take off 50% or more of your health in a single hit. So, you'd probably rather prefer to fight the zombies. Alright. See, I've hardly done anything except chop down a few trees, pick up some rocks, fight a few zombies, and work on the building. And I've already been gaining skill points. You can gain skill pretty quickly and easily. You know, it's not that bad. You just gotta be willing to put the time and effort in. Alright. So here's one issue that uh, one of my friends, Raven, he didn't really like, but I don't like it either. In order to get experience from crafting, you have to be in the crafting table when the crafting recipe completes. So you see, it's going to take 140 minutes, or 140 seconds. That's not 140 seconds to complete er to complete one item, it's to complete all seven. And it completes individually one at a time. So I have to be in here for every completion in order to get experience. Sometimes when you do this, it's going to show up in uh, another language. Or for example, like I have the mouse over the log right now. You see it's not in English. Uh, that's because the developer is in Asia. You know, it's a lone guy. He doesn't know English well. So it's taking time to actually translate everything. But he will get it done. Anyways, I will be back after we get the walls up. Alright, so we've got our main walls up. We've got some beams up here to be ready for our second story. Um, well, let's see. Uh, right now we can... So we can put the floors up here. They will lock to the beams. Which is good, you know, that's what we want them to do. So what we can't do is we can't use these. Not with the beams because that's going to block you. Now, you could use this, but you notice what it does? It only goes halfway. So we're actually going to have to remove this. And we can try using the long one, but here's a problem. Yeah, you notice that? It goes outside the door. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to add a beam here. A beam here.
here. Yeah, this gets a little tricky. Alright, we'll probably have to be up there before we can get that one to actually connect. And we'll add that. So this will give us a walkway around. Yeah, you notice you're not going to be able to build super small bases. So if you try for a one by one, it's not going to work. <laughs> we don't want to put that floor there. So we're going to need a lot more wood for all this. Um, but, you know, we're not going to finish this out. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and focus on the next part of this. We are going to get some resources to make a forge. Now for that, I've already crafted a stone pickaxe. But to do so, what you do is you go into hit tab, click on this little hammer icon, and click select stone pickaxe. It takes one stick and three stones. Even if you start without beginning gear, you're never going to be completely empty handed. You can craft a stone axe, a hammer, the stone knife, a spear, pickaxe, a torch. A uh, torch requires fabric. Downside of a torch is it doesn't last that long. A bow, arrows, bandage from cloth fabrics and a cloth bag. Um, if you start without beginner gear you aren't going to have a backpack. You're just going to have this inventory and you probably aren't going to have anything in it. All right. Okay so this is going to be an iron rock which we don't need. Also important to note your gear slots. Your first two slots are for larger items, such as your bow and your spear. Your spear is long, so if you take it out, you need a big bag to put it in. Um, any objects you drop on the uh, uh, sorry slots three through six are smaller things, you know, guns, knives, and tools. Except for the pickaxe. The pickaxe has to go in slots one and two. All right, there we go. That's what we need. These reddish rocks are going to be clay. You'll use the clay for, you know, um, building the forge, your kiln, and eventually building bricks to make some of the strongest buildings. The strongest building is a combination of concrete and brick. So we have enough that we can pick up the furnace. Now uh, we aren't going to get to the smoking furnace because that's the more advanced version. We just need a basic furnace for now. Alright, you notice how it's just dumping everything everywhere. You know, we'll keep a little pathway here. Um, we can probably put something over here. But for now, let's do our furnace. So our furnace needs logs, stone, and clay. We've got the clay, and we need stone, and we need some logs. So let's go ahead and chop down another tree. Um, we're gonna just drag these out because we don't need them. trees do and they sometimes do. You go along it looking for a spot where you can hit it, you're probably not going to find it, and then you accidentally do. You notice how the tree was moving. Um, they will roll on the ground. If they roll into you, they will hurt you. If they 
Hmm. If they fall on you, they will hurt you. So it's best to just be careful. It's getting to be night in the game. I am just gonna sleep through today so we can actually get some light again. Uh. Alright, the game is a little glitchy when you sleep, so you're gonna see what it does, at least on my screen. May or may not do this for you, just depends on when you play and you know, what your graphics settings are like, what your graphics card's like, and how the game interacts with them. <coughs> Alright. It is now 4.34 a.m. Uh, let's go ahead and sleep for two more hours. Yeah, you notice how my re my thirst and everything's going down. So another thing we will go ahead and craft is our campfire. But guess what? It's raining. So will our campfire work? No. Go ahead, get the stone we need, and we can finish these up. So as, <clears throat> as you can see, we are on day three, um, you know, still early enough in it. Uh, your basic campfire, you can throw meat down here, but in order to purify water, you have to have a pot. And you drag your bottle of water onto this, and you can light it then hit cook to actually cook this up top. Any meat you put down here will cook automatically, but you know, we aren't worried about meat. We're just gonna go ahead and get this water cleaned up. It's a little weird the way it does it. To pick it up, you just drag the bottles over it, and you notice how it went from yellow to blue. eating or drinking you're not able to actually do anything else. Alright, so there's our furnace. Um, so with the furnace what you'll do is you'll drag ore into it. Uh, we've got silver which... yeah okay, silver requires one ore per nugget. All you do is select the mount on the slider and set it to craft and it'll craft. The furnace does not require fuel. At least not this one. The Smelting furnace, however, does. For fuel, you can use, you know, wood, log, uh, sticks, logs. Um, you can turn logs into charcoal here in the regular furnace, and that'll actually burn longer. There is coal in the game. If you get coal, don't use it for the furnace. Save it. You'll have better uses for it later. thing. Let's do things. Alright, we picked up all of these engineering volumes. These are skill books. Basically, you take a skill book. Um, step out. You notice right now we have... Alright, 
so we've got engineering up to one, and this is engineering volume one. So we try to use it. It says completed or insufficient learning level. The, the errors are not quite accurate enough, um, but in this instance, you can tell by the fact that we already have engineering one. We don't need this book. So instead, we'll see. Yep, here we go. Engineering volume two. We can actually use this and read. Um, when you read, it just subtracts from your mood. Your mood will automatically go back up all over time as you're doing things out in the world. So you can only read a certain number of times before it'll stop saying that you're no longer interested. Let's see if we can get to that point. Okay, we're down to 26 for our mood. Mm -hmm. It's going to tell us I'm not excited to watch it right now. I mean, we're not watching a book, but, you know. You cannot read unless your mood is at 36 or higher. Uh, the reason for this is if your mood drops too low, your character will start to slowly deteriorate and die. To raise your mood, you know, be outside doing something. Uh, you notice how everything just kind of got a little drab and dreary. That's because my mood is so low. As my mood goes back up, the world will brighten up. Um, if you end up too low on any of your hunger and thirst, the world will go gray as you start to die. It does take a while for your health to actually deplete, but so you have time to, you know, find some food and water if you need to. Or you can do what some of us do and just go over here and suicide to restart your life. Um, you know, if you have a bed put down, like I do in here, that I've been sleeping on, uh, you go to it, set as respawn point, and you'll respawn on it every time you die. Which is good. So, last important note, I uh, don't have a roof done, so I can't really show you, but you can climb up there and, you know, you think, alright, great, I have a perch I can stand on and shoot zombies from on the raid days. Yeah, that's not really smart. Um, so if you played seven days, you know, all your structures are built by blocks, a group of blocks to make a wall. Uh, and, you know, it takes two blocks to make a doorway or doorway is basically two blocks high. The integrity of the structures in this game are a lot less than what you'd be used to in seven days and some other games. So if you're up there on the roof, zombies can't get can't get to you in a straight air line. They're gonna destroy the entire building below you. Or, you know, they'll know this thing is here, but they aren't going to necessarily try to come through the door. They're just going to come through whatever wall happens to be closest to them. That's why having the windows, you know, it seems like a waste, uh, but it's actually good to defend against zombies. However, if you're in a multiplayer server, um, I wouldn't have windows next to things you would be storing items in, just because you want to make sure people can't easily get to and steal your stuff. Anyways, that's some basic tips on how to survive in No One Survived, and I will see you later. Don't forget to like and subscribe.